Recently, I was watching a video by Texture Labs where an interesting composition was made by filtering the RGB channels in the blend options within Photoshop. As Affinity does not have this option, I thought it might be an interesting idea how to achieve the same effect in Affinity Photo. Let's first go through the steps applied by Texture Labs in Photoshop. He starts off with a black and white image and creates a duplicate from it and then transforms this duplicate by flipping it horizontally. In this example, I will rotate it with 180 degrees. In the advanced blend options of this duplicate, the green and the blue channels are turned off, which creates the cyan red look. Then he makes another copy, and this time in the blend options only the green is used. By lowering the opacity to 50%, the colors are changed to blue and orange. Next, a gradient is applied, but only for the blue channel. As a final step, another gradient is applied in 50% opacity. In the blend options, only the red and the green is selected, and the blend mode is set to overlay, which as a result creates this interesting look. If you want to know more about what is happening, check out the video. A clear explanation is given for each step. Link is in the description. It can be challenging in Affinity Photo to recreate the same effect, as we don't have the option in Affinity Photo to turn on and off the RGB channels in the blending options, similar to Photoshop, and we need to get a little bit creative. So let's start first with the red channel. I will disable the layers in the Photoshop except the red layer, so we have a reference to work with. I will duplicate the image and rotate it similar like Photoshop. To understand what we need to do, let's first check what Photoshop did when we only enable the red channel. Let's add a temporary fill layer and apply only the red in the blend options and see what happens. By enabling the red channel only overrides the red values of the image with the values from the current layer. This is why the white fill will make the image completely red and it becomes cyan for the black fill and cyan is the absence of red. In other words, the inverted red is subtracted, which creates the cyan color, followed by adding or setting the red color values from the layer. This is exactly how we are going to recreate it. I will use the current layer for the subtract step and create a duplicate, which I will later use on for the add step. So let's start with the subtract. I'm going to add a curves layer and invert the red channel. The other channels are not used, so we can flatten them. This will create a black and red image. Because we inverted the red channel, all original bright values have become black and vice versa. I will move this curves adjustment as a child to the image and set the blend mode to subtract. Awesome! We achieved the first step where we subtracted the inverse red. The next step is to add the red back. Let's enable the second duplicate on top and add a curves adjustment. This time we want to keep the red and hide the green and the blue. Perfect. We only have the reds now. Let's move the curves adjustment to the image layer and this time we need to add it to the image by using the add blend mode. Awesome. We have almost the same result as in Photoshop. One final step is to adjust the blend range of this add layer, so it gradually applies from the darks to the brights, making sure we don't overblow the values. And there we have it, the image applied only in red as in Photoshop. I can group this and name it red. The next step is the green in 50% opacity, which will change the colors to blue and orange. As this will be using the same image, I'm going to duplicate the red group and adjust the curves in this group, so instead of red, green will be selected. In the subtract layer, I will make sure that we only have an inverted green curve. On the add layer, we can flatten the red and restore the green to get the green channel colors only. Perfect! We now have the green only, just like Photoshop. The opacity is still at 100%, so when I change the opacity of the group to 50%, we will get the same effect as Photoshop. Pretty awesome. 
Now time for the gradient with only the blue channel applied. I will add the gradient and as you guessed I will apply the same steps. But this time I will use the inverted blue for the subtract and just blue for the add. After grouping the two layers I can set the opacity to 50% just like in Photoshop. Now the final step which is a bit tricky and where most people would probably get stuck. The gradient with only red and green in overlay blend mode. As I use the same gradient I can duplicate the existing group. As we will be only using the red and the green I need to make changes in the curves adjustment. So in the subtract layer I will inverse the red and the green and flatten the blue. In the add adjustment I will restore the red and the green but flatten the blue. Now we have the same effect as in Photoshop where the red and the green is selected. Let's change the blend mode of this group to overlay. And as I expected and maybe you did also the end result is not the same. This has to do with transparency. The adjustments we applied created transparency and the transparency is propagated down. However, we don't want it to be propagated down. We need the transparent areas to be filled with a neutral color for overlay, which is 50% gray. So if I add a fill layer with 50% gray at the bottom of our group, see what happens. We get pretty much the exact same result as in Photoshop. Isn't that awesome? Here is another way of achieving the same if you prefer a more formula based approach. Let me group all the adjustment groups into a new group and disable them for the next method. Let's start over by duplicating the image and rotating it. As before I will need two copies. So let's duplicate this rotated layer again. We are going to focus on the red layer first and the method is the same but instead of a curves adjustment I'm going to use a procedural texture to filter out the reds. On the first layer I will add the procedural texture live filter. For the alpha I'm going to set the value to 1 minus R which is the inverse of red. For red I'm going to use 1. The green and the blue will need to stay at 0. As this is a subtract layer I will need to set its blend mode to subtract. For the add layer we can add a procedural texture line filter again but this time the alpha will be equal to red. The red we can set to 1, the green and the blue to 0. Let's now add this by setting the blend mode to add and adjust the blend range. There you have it but this time with a procedural texture filter instead of curves. We can repeat the same steps just like with the curves version and get the same result eventually. I have done this already and let me enable the group I created previously to see the final result. The same as before. If I open up the group you can see I used the procedural textures and here is how the green version looks like. Important here is to use the gray fill layer for the gradient in overlay. As this is using the red and the green channel, make sure the R and the G in the formula are both set to 1. For the alpha you can use the R or the G value, as they will be the same due to the fact that it is a grayscale gradient. If you're working with a non-grayscale image, you could also use the max of the two. Well, this was interesting and I hope you liked it as much as I did. Thank you for watching again and until the next video.